creating a culture of love. Hey everyone, my name is Atticus. I'm a New York Times bestselling author. And today I'm joining Ruben on the Live Through Love podcast. I hope you enjoy our time. We discuss my backstory, why I remain anonymous, and how poetry saved my life, as well as lots of other fun stories. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you there. Atticus, welcome to the show. Thank you for tuning in. I see that you're a little virtual. This is our first time doing a virtual session, so this is a special heavy lift. So everyone, please be patient with us. And uh, thank you for having us. I've been a big fan for a long time. I've actually known you, known of your poetry. Obviously, you're, you're known for a few different sayings, one being stay wild. And you've come out with a few books over the years. Recently, one is L-V-O-E, and since I write L-O-V-E, um, <laughs> I think that's where we reached out and connected. But tell me a little bit about you in your words and who, what makes Atticus Atticus? Yeah. Um, and first off, yeah, like, you know, likewise, I've been a big fan following you for a while. So it's funny, we're both so embedded in love. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't connected earlier. Um, but yeah, you know, my, my story is a little, little serendipitous. It, it's, um, you know, I never set out to be a, a poet. I'm, I'm from Canada originally, um, from Vancouver Island. And, um, you know, I, poetry and like writing wasn't even in, in my, in my wheelhouse or, you know, in my universe is something that I might be uh, interested in. And, um, I, it, years, um, years ago now, I think it's probably seven years ago, I was in France and I met this uh, actor, a guy named Michael Madsen. Do you know who that is? He's like the bad guy mm, in Kill Sounds Bill very familiar. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, legend. Um, yeah, I met him through a friend and, um, you know, he spent like a, a, a week with him and he he's like one of the most profound people I ever met and he told me how writing poetry had saved his life and he just put out this book of poetry and for me, that was like, you know, here's this American badass writing poetry. You're telling me he's writing poetry. And for me, it kind of gave me permission to explore a more uh, poetic side of mm. myself. And I just started writing after that. Yeah. No, that's interesting, right? Because he's a pretty manly guy. He's, he's plays those tough characters. Um <laughs> in his movies and in his roles but why as men do you think we need to per have permission to do something that maybe the world deems as more feminine but if we look at some of the great poets in the world who are they they're, they're men right putting it out there what do you think is is framing it in a sense that it's not a manly thing to do or a tough thing to do or or why can't we as men show up in that space yeah, I mean, it, it's a it's a really good question. And I, I think it's a really important question of, of kind of like, why are men so encouraged not to be vulnerable? And I think it's kind of like a product of of just how we were raised, you know, coming out of like, the great generation and the baby boomers. And, and there was this like, you know, in the last 100 years, it was like, you couldn't be the man could not be vulnerable. And we, it was kind of like this, this moving mm. toxic masculinity. There was, you know, there was no exploration into um, the full spectrum of who, what a person is. And I think it's really, really unfortunate. And I would say that, um, and hope that it's, it's changing. And you look at these younger generations and the kind of, you know, the spectrum of masculine and feminine, um, it is definitely not polarized as much anymore. There's kind of like a, there's a beautiful spectrum to it. Um, but I mean, have you found the same in, in, in art or, I mean, street art is, I would say more like a, tends to be more masculine, but have you found some things yeah. uh, similar? Yeah. No, no, great question. Because obviously my work is based in love and, I've been an athlete my whole life. I'm a very physical guy, right? I'm 200 pounds. I'm six foot. I train every day. I've played football, soccer, track. So when sometimes people get taken aback, like, oh, like you're like a man's man and you're running around <laughs> painting love. And I've got poems too. It's like, when you love you, that's when. 
Um, some of my poems are in the female voice, right? Hey, darling, you are enough. Darling, when you choose yourself, yeah. darling, you know, it's like, it's so interesting. And they're like, well, how can you actually embrace that? And maybe it's because I need to, because I'm showing up very invulnerable. I've been very tough, very standoffish for a long time. My persona is like the jock and you get yeah. caught up in stories. Sometimes when I was a little kid, I overshared. I'm like, well, you're not supposed to share those things. So every time you're not supposed to do something, guess what? I'm creating another wall, putting up another barrier. Eventually yeah. that becomes a mask, but then I don't even know I'm wearing a mask. It's my truth. But is it really my truth? So how are we starting to do that? And what are we doing in the work? We're trying to unpack it and peel away the onions and get to the point. But do I feel like I'm not man enough or I'm not worthy enough or, or like I'm feminine because i paint love all over them no if anything i am more tapped into being a man than i've ever been and sometimes i'll post things totally like i have this video on my youtube it's gone viral it's sir it's sir ian mckellen talking about calling people love and you start looking at the comments on there people are like oh that's amazing that's this oh if you did that hr would come down and sue you and fire you and you'd be in lawsuits and then the feminisms will be like smashing you over the head don't call me that you don't know me it's rah rah woman and then some of the men that are real tough are like that'll make me gay all of a sudden i'm going to be gay if i call you love i think all those misconceptions those are the things that we get to lean into and unpack as creators and artists using our words right. and our poems and our art and being men that show up in that space Totally. Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. Exactly. And you, you kind of touched on a lot of, a lot of important things. And I think it's, you know, like I said, I think the trend is towards, uh, again, you know, away from that. And it really is unpacking that. And, um, but I, you know, I loved what you said there. It's like, you know, we, we wear a mask. We, I have a poem that's kind of called, we all wear masks. And it's just about how, you know, any version of yourself can be a mask. It's like how you show up on Instagram is, is, certainly a mask you know it's like the it's it can mm -hmm. be very different than who you are in person and how you show up to your parents might be different than how you show up to your friends and it's kind of like these mm -hmm. characters we play and there's you know the truth of us lies somewhere in the middle but it's also just like trying to find find our the truth of ourselves and and really like lean in toward the authentic version of ourselves i love kind of in poetry you know looking at that and and you know, really talking about the courage it takes because it does take courage, but the courage it takes yeah. to, to be your, to be yourself. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I say is never lose the courage to continue. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I, I put that up on a mural. There's little words like that. I have something about masks later. Let's I'll share my mask when you share your mask one. I don't know all your poems, but, um, <laughs> I don't know. All but but it's true. Here. So let, so after a while, you're like, what's the next one? Um, <laughs> but uh, a couple of things. So so we're talking about masks and some I would say probably would say maybe you're a little bit of a hypocrite for being anonymous or pseudonymous and putting on that mask. I wouldn't say that because I'm a creator and I kind of understand the space you're coming from. But how would you answer someone like that or a critic in your space yeah well i think it kind of goes back to like the main reason that i chose to be anonymous and um mm -hmm. you know that was when i was first starting out i was i was in um la and venice and you know was surrounded by a lot of this this fame um and and a lot of my friends were were really kind of on the come up or you know famous and whatnot and um I lost someone, uh, a friend of mine, um, who died in a hotel in, in uh, Vancouver. And they're from mm. the same same small island I'm from in Canada. And they were on one of the biggest shows in television. And, um, you know, he passed away. And, and um, this was right when Atticus was starting. And I kind of made a decision. I was like, you know, do I go out there and put my face on all this stuff and and really you know try to get famous and recognized and 
Um, Or or do I go the other way and say, and, you know, as an experiment, say, hey, can I spread, you know, what I want to spread in in poetry and um, and do it anonymously and Mm. not be famous and not be recognized and 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 know that I'm doing it for the right reasons. And I think it was uh, a blessing in disguise because one thing it's allowed me to do is is separate myself from Atticus in a lot of ways, you know. The good, yeah. the good and the bad, um, the praise and the criticism, there's just a separation and it allows me to write um, and continue to write um, honestly and, and truthfully. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, it, you know, it's it's a weird thing because I'm so separated. I have no, you know, I forget people follow. I forget that lots of people follow it. You know, it, it, there's just mm-hmm. such a separation and then I'll throw an event and, like, yeah. you know tons of people will show up and I'm like, Oh my God, wow. People are actually like reading this stuff. It's, it, it is, yeah, it's just a really interesting <laughs> phenomenon that I never, I never planned. But, um, you know, after losing, uh, losing my friend, it, it was just important to me to, 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 mm-hmm. to, uh, to stay anonymous. Yeah, no. And, and my case, what I'm really looking at is you're choosing a healthy boundary, right? right? And you're like, this is my craft. Let my craft speak for itself. Let it not be about me, knowing that it is me, but later than not getting caught up in it. I Trust me, I know it's definitely healthy for you to be able to have, well, if, Atticus, if Atticus, Atticus gets criticized, that's not me, because me, it's all out there. It's all there. It's like, oh, oh, and I take everything to heart. It's like, oh, man, how could I do better? Like, why didn't it land for the, you know, let me send them something. Let me. So I'm always trying to fix things. So I could yeah. see where there's a lot of healthy boundaries in that. But you could also see why society's going to use that as fuel in the negative, right? Right? Oh, you're not proud of your work. Let's hide. And, and that's yeah. not even the case. You have a great story behind it. You have a reason behind it. And, and there's nothing to, to put that down. But it, uh, it's, yeah, I find it so funny if, if, if anybody complains about it. It's like, I'm trying not to be famous, you know? And it's like, most people, are just yeah. like, if you try to be famous, people are just like, there's so much criticism just being like, ah, you're trying to be mm-hmm. famous. You're trying to be recognized. And uh, you know, to, for someone to be like, ah, oh, you're trying not to be famous. I just think is, is such a funny phenomenon. Like, you know, luckily there's, there's like very, very little, I, you know, but if it ever came up, I, I think it's just hilarious. Yeah. Maybe that's a, a book in the future. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it would be, be funny to write about that and just kind of explore. Yeah, new book. Is there, is there a thought ever you might take the, the, the veil off? Um, you know, at this point, no. Um, if I felt that I could do it in a way that, like you said, there was boundaries and I could control it and, and just like, mm-hmm. you know, Atticus is, is a small piece of who I am. And, um, I, you know, I think, I think to your point, it would be nice one day to just be like, and be able to authentically like come on a podcast and just like chat with you. Cause it does like add certain difficulties and, and to some degree, I'm not living, you know, that full authentic, this is my whole picture. Um, yeah. and so, you know, the, yeah, I've, I've thought about it and, you know, for certainly like publishers agents and anybody that I work with is like you know please you know please come out and take the mask off just because it's you know <laughs> it's so good for business but you know that's just not why yeah I'm, why I'm in it and um no totally I've been, been lucky enough in, in other areas that I Atticus is more just a fun thing for me to do yeah no that's great and you're having fun with it and that's all that matters but uh, a book signing then, how does that work? Are you there? You're not there? Or you have a mask <laughs> on? Or um, You know what? I, I, I haven't done one in a while. I kind of retired from, from public facing stuff. But when I used to do okay. them, I, I went on these book tours and I just wear a mask and just do readings and meet people, take photos. And it was, it was really cool because it was, it was nice to get rid of that, you know, social media veil and be able to meet people mm-hmm. and just like talk poetry and talk like life. And, um, yeah, it was just this, it was, it was really wonderful. Yeah. I'll do it again. Yeah, and I think it allows, people. yeah. Sorry, go. yeah. I, and I think it also allows them to, 
make you whatever they need for the words to be delivered. You know, and yeah. what I say is like my my work is an invitation for the viewer to experience and feel it and see it. And I lead you to the door. I do as much as open the door, but I can't push you through the door. And by the time you walk through the door, you take it in for whatever you need it for. You know, I painted this for X. You take it in for X and they're both okay. I and love it's that. not about yeah. what did I need it for? It's what you needed it for. So I think you allow them to like, who is this person? Oh, this is my best friend. This is my cousin. Yeah. This is my dad. This is my mom. And maybe they're getting able to process things because you are anonymous. So, so there's an opportunity there too. I, honestly, I, I think you, you, you touched on something really, really beautiful. And it, it's kind of my favorite thing about um, writing is that people do take the words and they make them into whatever meaning they need. Um, yeah, I, I love that. I, I, so my, the mask I, I often wear is reflective. And I remember giving this talk one time and this woman afterwards came up and was like, you know, I don't know why you chose a reflective mask, but I think it's beautiful because people can see their themselves in you. And mm -hmm. I thought there was something really beautiful, uh, about that. And, um, it's just, just to your point. And, and, you know, one thing, one, Thing that I never expected to happen, but a lot of people get the, my words tattooed, and um, mm -hmm. you know, people often ask me about the meanings, and I'm like, well, what do you, what did, what did it mean to you to get it tattooed? And and they'll tell me, and I'm like, that is beautiful. It's probably more beautiful than my original meaning. And <laughs> I just think, you know, as it as it relates to art, they're taking something, and they're it's what art is. It's like they're taking something, they're putting their own spin, meaning, art on it putting it on their bodies and it's become something else entirely and it doesn't belong to me at all. Yeah. You know, it's there. And I think there's something yeah. really, really beautiful about that. No, our job as creators is to create and give it away. It's yeah. yours now. Run yeah. with it. Take it. Yeah. Do your thing with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, yeah, that's, that's what art has been since the beginning of time, really. So taking a step back, so you made you you met this actor that gave you permission to start diving into yourself and using words to start dealing with things that you were dealing with. So so your poetry has helped you cope with mental health, depression. What stuff were you dealing with? What are some of the conversations that you've had? Because I know I've had my own and a lot of creators operate in different spaces or entrepreneurs or people in general. And it doesn't have to be super dark. You know, most people think, oh, I have to be the guy, the dark guy in the corner, like cutting myself. And then I'm a, an artist. I'm like, no, you could also be over here. Like, it, there's no extreme to anything. It's like, what is your journey and what are you going through? So how has that process helped you process some of this? Are you just working through it in your head? And Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, um, that you know, there's a saying that poetry finds you exactly when it needs to. And I think it, it relates to art, too. It kind of art finds you, uh, whether on the creative mm -hmm. side or the kind of, uh, you know, experience side. But, uh, I think poetry found me exactly when I, I needed it. And, and it really helped me, um, process a lot of the, of like the feelings that I was, I was having, you know, I was very con confused of like what I was in the world and like what, why Dharma was and my purpose and, um, you know, what it all meant. And, um, it really helped me kind of, you know, they say like words are better down on paper and, and, um, mm -hmm. feelings are never better down on paper rather. And I, you know, I, I truly believe it. It was like journaling. I just happened to be sharing all these journals with the world. Um, but it helped me in this, in this long journey, um, you know, exactly to what we were talking about at first. It's like, you know, we were guys who were, you know, I, I grew up riding motorcycles and boxing and, and in Canada, you know, you're, you're pushed into the masculine a lot. And this was helping me be vulnerable and show up as like a more holistic man in the world and, mm -hmm. and way more of the man that I wanted to be, um, as opposed to kind of what society, society had, had made me early on. And, and it, it, you know, that the Atticus really saved my life in, in so many ways. And, and really helped me become a yeah, better person in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and some of that is you're dealing with your dark side and your light side. Yeah. So are you yeah. able to, you know, I always say, I, I, I don't say dark and light, I say love and fear. So I've oh, done yeah, self-portraits cool. of myself where I'll do like myself in the middle and on one side, everything's fear. And on the other side, everything's love. And everything in the center is I'm writing all the heady stuff. And then I get down to the heart stuff and the heart chooses which side is what. So it's like, if I am unworthy, I'm in fear. If I am worthy, I am in love. So I start answering the opposite with with the work. And I believe that everything is love and fear and everything falls under those two pillars. And we like to make things up. Humans are meaning making machines, whatever it is. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a sign. It's this, it's that, right? We and we want to unpack it. And exactly. And it's like, so why do people think poets, I'm going to use poets that would that do simple poetry, two words, four words, three, they're like, that's not poetry. It's not this long. It's not a sonnet. It's, you know, whatever the case is, I'm like, stay wild means whatever you need it to me. And in my case is don't conform. You know, I left corporate America. Yeah. Staying wild is coming back to myself, becoming the artist I was supposed to be, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it's like people who say that um, short form poetry is not, not poetry. It's like, okay, that's great. Um, but like, I never, never set out to, to write the Iliad or like the, you know, Odyssey. I love writing, like just playing with words. I, I've done it since I was I was little, you know, just like seeing how much I could say in, in like the shorter, in shorter like aphorisms and epigrams. And that's what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. but to do anything else would be completely against what like I is authentic to me. It's like, yeah. you know, you doing impressionism would be kind of against what, you know, is, is real to you. And uh -huh. uh, I think, <laughs> but you know, it's like, it, it you got it got to lean into to what you actually enjoy and what you're like passionate about and, mm -hmm. and not try to conform to what other people's people say it's like you know it it do you think any sort of art would have progressed if, if people hadn't just taken what was normal and then changed it or what you know whatnot that's just what it's been since since the beginning it's like we're look at uh digital music now you know, look, look at, look mm -hmm. at electronic, look at DJs. It's like the whole landscape has changed completely. Um, yeah, but it doesn't, you know, it's still, it's still art. And it's, I think it's, it's all about what you're trying to do and say and what you enjoy really at the end of the day. No, I agree. And I think when you start allowing that outside noise to dictate what you're creating, you're no longer creating what you want to put out in the world. Yeah. And you're trying to conform again. That's the total opposite of stay wild to keep using that. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my friends, Humble the Poet. I don't know if you've seen him. He's pretty big on yeah, Instagram yeah. and stuff. Totally. Yeah. You guys should definitely connect. But we, yeah. we the first time we met, we, we met for about two hours. He sat here and he's just like, you know what, Ruben? Like, I'm looking at your work. Like, I, I know there was a hell of a journey to get here. But the fact that you're able to distill it all down to a single handwritten love, hmm. like you've done, you've done it every which way, complicated, not complicated, simple, mm -hmm. not simple. And like, no, it's simple. That's what it is. It's that. And everyone knows what that is. Yeah. So that's the whole point. The simpler we can make it, yeah. the clearer we can make it, it's going to land, but it's going to mean so much more. It's about negative space and openness we don't so need a true. thousand words on a page you know put the whole page and just write breathe in the middle i have one mural it's a huge wall it's just breathe yeah, that's all that. it says great yeah yeah so no, it's, it's like I, I, i'm the in the in the same way i have this long poem at the end of my first book and it's titled love her but leave her wild and no one ever talks about the long poem, but they like, that's my most tattooed phrase is just the title of that poem, love her, but mm -hmm. leave her wild. And I, I think, you know, what's beautiful about it is just like, it's so simple, but it me it can mean so much to so many people. And so, you know, people get that, that tattooed and they put, and they instill their own meaning, like we were talking about. And I think there's, there's something amazing. It's like your breathe mural it's like people come across it and see it exactly when they need to and they're just like oh god you know relax take a breath like this mm -hmm. this too shall pass and 
um, mm -hmm. there is a beautiful beauty and simplicity because, you know, people can access it. And yeah, it's what social media is these days, basically. Yeah. Doing a no. saying a lot. With so, a I little. mean, yeah. And that's the whole point. You got a small caption. I mean, Twitter, what was that? 140 characters. Yeah. Now it's expanded, but yeah. I think Instagram two two thousands the cap. So social media, the good and the bad, we're not going to sit here and chastise it, but it's allowed us to be more succinct. Mm -hmm. And I think we get, we get very verbose. And then sometimes we want to use huge words. Hey, we're smart. Let me use these really big words. <laughs> to impress you of how smart we are now it's now we're all in ego you, and at the end of the day it's like yeah have you heard the that sky quote? is <laughs> have you heard that which quote? one it's like sometimes i use big words i don't understand to come across a little bit more photosynthesis i use that all the time oh like, man i'm sorry i i, I you probably have you and you were saying something really really no 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 that's great no but i was saying it's like there's the good and the bad of social media and you know it's the bane of all our existence especially now yeah. engagements in the gutter you could post something boom hundred thousand likes views whatever awesome you post a bunch of other stuff 800 300 2000 and you're just like what is happening luckily it's happening to everyone yeah. but then they're like well put better content put more of this i'm like it's not a quality problem. It's a, there's just a noise problem. Yeah. And what I've started realizing is we get to start showing our message louder and louder and louder because it is getting squashed. Yeah. I, fear and negativity is what goes viral all the time. Or, you know, women making a clap. Look, I ain't mad at seeing that too. But <laughs> why is that at the forefront? Why not stuff that's going to better humanity? So it's a little frustrating when you see a viral video of someone getting run over with right. millions of views and then not something of like, I don't know, some of, let's just say warm, fuzzy kitty videos. Those yeah. make us feel good. But still, it's like, I, I see that that's happening, but the clearer we are, we got to stay the course and just keep being us. Yeah. Do you, have you dealt with any of that now? It's like, well, no one's seeing this. Am I going to put less out there? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, it's tricky and and um you know i i think everyone's kind of felt that and and you know growth if you if you think about growth back in the day i don't know when you started posting but like compared to now it's just it's completely different and you know i think part of that is is like new platforms come up all the time it's like everyone's on TikTok now now it's on re now it's all about reels on instagram and um you know it's 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 a shame and you kind of wish and hope for humanity that there, there would be a trend towards like, you know, more positive stuff. And, um, sometimes there is, but like, like you said, there's, there's, there is that also like race to the bottom of like, what's the most shocking, terrible footage you can possibly, right. possi yeah, possibly watch. And I, I really don't think like, I don't know if you find this, but if, if I'm on, Instagram, Reddit, TikTok too long, I, I start getting like less happy than I was before, you know? And I think oh, yeah. we've really got to take those cues from ourselves and be like, okay, I'm going to delete the app for a few months, whatnot. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, you just gotta, you do have to be, you do have to be careful. Um, I was, I was watching like an Andrew Huberman and he was talking about how we we're humans these days with social media and, and all these other things are so like dopamine fixed that um, we start getting really anxious towards the end of the day sometimes. And it's because we've just been like spiking, spiking, spiking our dopamine that mm -hmm. nothing, nothing is, is, um, you know, bringing our dopamine up. And so we're like, we're sad, we're depressed, you know, we have anxiety, but in reality, it's like, we've just like pressed that dopamine button way too many times during the yeah. day and our human bodies were never created to have that. And so you got to like unplug, do something else, go to the gym and then, you know, turn that stuff off for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know. No, it's, it's important or else you're spent. Yeah. 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 I was just going to say, you know, I, I, it, you know, people uh, like you and I, we spread our message, we spread our art on Instagram, but we're also here saying, like, I think it's funny that we're here saying, like, take a break from Instagram, take a break from social. It's, you know, 
don't yeah, yeah. Uh, and i think it's also just it's like curate the life you want what you want around you yeah so if there's stuff upsetting you unfollow all those people if there's yeah. stuff you like keep following those people follow more of what you want to see yeah. but i think we're such gluttons for punishment right like why do we keep following the gossip yeah you know it's like ooh, more popcorn yeah yeah, yeah. give me more gossip <laughs> But it's not making you feel good, right? No. And then you're over here on this side or on the opposite end. Everyone's quick to celebrate the celebrity that doesn't know you, but then you forget your friends that are winning and mm -hmm. you don't really celebrate them or you ask them for everything for free. Oh, well, give it to me. I'm your friend. Yeah. I'm like, well, why don't you go ask Kim Kardashian for the thing? <laughs> Cause she can afford it for sure and give it to you, but like, she's not going to so, yeah. like, it's this weird thing of like, why aren't we cheering the ones around us? We're cheering the ones that are actually upsetting us. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And, and we start, you know, all those studies that come out about happiness and how it's got to be community and your relationships and all that. And we start replacing our communities and our relationships with, with these like one sided things. So we like follow their Kardashians mm -hmm. and we're like, Oh, that's my community. That's my friend. That's my relationship. But then it's not, it doesn't come back to you. And so you're like, Oh, why do I feel sad? Or like not connected to my community. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, yeah, they don't, they don't know who you are. <sighs> yeah. So it's this interesting thing. And like, if we can, we are so much more connected, right? The six degrees of separation with social media. Now it's like three and a half. Yeah. We are so we're one tick away from anybody yet we're so disconnected now mm -hmm. because even when we're in the same room we're all like on our phones yeah i mean i'm guilty of it it's not like i'm saying i'm not i'm not perfect at all but it's it's like we can talk to anyone in the world now yeah but we're so far from from right here do you have kids yet i don't know if i asked yet yeah kids? yeah i was actually i was gonna ask you oh, i have yeah. a two-year-old oh amazing I, yeah well what i was gonna ask is like how do you find you know, you can like separate from your phone. Do you have like rules or like things that you use with your, with your kid? Great question. So I have some hard through lines that we started establishing while my wife was pregnant. One was unless there's a crazy project or something, be home by six. Mm. So but home by six and um, everything at night, I basically do bedtime and all those things. Yeah. I try to be off my phone as much as possible. Sometimes there's like, there's, all, you know, nothing is that important, but it's important. So yeah. sometimes like I have to deal with this email. I have to deal with, I have to delete this thing, or I have to get this feedback back to the editor. The podcast is going live tomorrow or something. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is just make sure if we sneak a phone thing, we're like, oh, he's not looking at us. Let me, do, 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 do. oh, if he mm -hmm. looks, just put it down real quick. What we don't want to do is be this in front of him. This is our most adamant rule. We don't want to be this and he's looking at us and yeah. saying, daddy, 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 and we're not paying attention. Because totally. that can easily happen because we do it to each other. And like, what'd you say? Oh, I didn't know you were there. So that's kind of the through line. We don't have a, a hard no phone rule. Yeah. But when we're together, we're trying to be as present as possible. Plus, it's only a few hours. So if I can't be off my phone for at least 90% of that in those few hours, I have a problem. That's on me. <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything else. Let me figure it out. Yeah. So I don't know if that answered that. Do you? Do you have a process? You, you have a child too, right? No, I don't actually. I, I, I no, don't. you don't? Like, I'm hopefully in the next few years here but not right now um and that's kind of why mm. i'm interested in you know just how does that change when you when you have kids but yeah i've i've heard other people say that rule where you like never be on your phone in front of them because it what it instills in them is like hey this phone is more important than they are and and you know um uh, yeah that yeah that's that that all seems wise i mean you know you try yeah i try to do the same thing you know don't have the phone in the morning for the first little while. Don't have it in at night for the, for the, you know, before bed. It's just, it is tricky. You know, it is things come up or like, you're like, Oh, I'll just check this one thing. And then, and then you're toast. But um, yeah, I mean, more and more, I'd like to just put those rules into place because I, to your point earlier, it's like, what, what's the life you want to live? You know, what's the, uh, yeah, and what, what do you need to do to, to yeah. make sure you can live that life?
No, and it's tough. Like 99% of my life is on this device here, this iPhone. Yeah. Like, it is. And I could work from anywhere in the world and social media, Shopify, like everything is on the phone. I could totally. basically do it all. So at any given moment, it's important. And I think it's just not beating yourself up or shaming yourself or guilting yourself or, or creating these negative conversations around it. It's, but just realize like, Hey, there's a time, there's a place. Like I get up, I check my phone. Like I would like to not be on the phone for an hour. It's not the case. You know, as yeah. a dad, I get up, I go to the bathroom, wash my face, brush my teeth. I go to the gym. So within yeah. that first 20 minutes, I'm getting ready, going to the gym. And then I plug into a podcast. Yeah, you know, yeah. I smile and, I, and I'm like thankful for getting up, but I can't not be on the phone. It's just that yeah. doesn't work for my lifestyle. At yeah. night is when I mostly check out. So if my wife and I sit and watch a show, I'm off the phone. Yeah. Like I'm really oh, good about like I am done. I'm off the phone. Like we try. I, no I always tell screening. her like, yo, it's no phone time. Yeah. So and it's and we watch a show. So I'm watching TV. It's it's not not a screen, but I'm like <laughs> that is my no more work. I am done. It's like turn off the brain. Yeah. I'm just watching something else. So that's how it is. And I think it's we get lost in the self-help books and the self-help podcasts and listening to everybody. Because if you listen to everything, listen to 10 wellness podcasts, the 10 best in the world, doesn't matter who they are. They all have similar or conflicting things and everything's going to kill you. So like yeah. pick your poison, blue light. I need red light now because I got the blue light and I need the blue blockers, but I need to sit in front of a red light. I have to eat organic. Oh no, organic's not good enough anymore. I have to go to the farm and get it from there. Oh, I, it's like, what is happening? All of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't wrap in plastic anymore. Oh, foil's not allowed. It can't, it has to be this kind of foil. <laughs> like the list goes on. I'm just like. It's exhausting, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna die. I'm, I know I'm gonna <laughs> die. So look, I'm not gonna go jump off a cliff, but let me do what I can and having as much fun as I want. So there's a whole new study of oh, drinking shrinks your brain. I'm like, okay, I could get behind that. I, I, I had a lot of medical study because I was gonna be a surgeon at one point yeah. in my life. So I believe a lot of these things and I'm like, well, you know what? I like to drink. I don't get obliterated. I don't drink to get drunk. I have a glass of wine here and there. I have some good tequila, something like that. And I enjoy it. I just drink really good stuff. Just yeah. drink the really good stuff. You know, they're like, all the sugar is going to kill you. Eat the really good piece of cake. Don't eat a Twinkie. Yeah, that's nasty. You know, <laughs> don't go eat totally. the terrible fried fast food eat the really good fried food. Like it, yeah. I pick my poison and like, I'm going to get the best of the best. At least it's a little bit better. I, I think know. you're, I think you're right. I, I think that I really think it's a dangerous thing to kind of over optimize. And you can almost like with the stress of trying to do everything and be perfect, you almost will come out behind just like, you know, mm -hmm. having certain, you know, blanket rules that are just, that are just, um, or like guidelines to live within. And, and, you know, 80% of your wellness will come from that top 20% of your decisions. And so if you're not just being mm -hmm. totally like insane, um, I think you're probably okay. And it's funny, you know, you're talking about the alcohol and I, and I don't disagree that like, you know, going crazy on, on alcohol will kill you. But it, it, I read that report and then my grandmother literally just turned 102 years old. And wow. Yeah, I know. It's insane. It, and she had uh, a whiskey and a, a Guinness every single day of her, you know, of her adult life till the end. Mm -hmm. And um, that's crazy. So it's like, so I like, think everything within moderation and, and like what, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not, like you said, drinking a nice tequila or red wine sometime isn't going to be the thing. And it's like drinking 30 beers with your your friends that'll probably you know a week uh or in a, in a week every every probably, day on the weekend yeah yeah every day on the weekend that's probably the thing you know yeah i mean i won't do what i what i did in my 20s now because yeah, i know no. better but still I, there's also a time and the place but it is moderation right we're on here yeah. to live to explore to take life to its fullest it's not about constraining ourselves because you you could hear the thing where there's a guy that lived to 99, smoked two packs of cigarettes and drank a handle of Jack every day. 
live no problem. Then on this end, you've got the guy yeah. that eats perfect, never drank, never smoked, works out all the time, everything is perfect, at 38, has a heart attack and is gone. Yeah. So like you have the extremes and everything in between. And, and we're resilient. I oh, think if, if we do what's right for us, at the end of the day, that that's what's going to be important. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so true. Yeah, and just find the life you want to live and and live it. You know, it's like if I go to to Italy, I'm on. I'm going to eat all the pot the pot, pasta there is there. You know, and drink all the nice. Oh food. yeah, no you know, doubt. Do it, you know, well, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is a bottle of wine. My wife and I went for three weeks. Let's just say we <laughs> went shredded, came back a little heavy. <laughs> Um, but that's the point, right? It when you happens, travel, yeah. experience everything, get the culture, get the people. When in Italy. Yeah. I totally agree. I mean, otherwise I feel like, and it's just my opinion, but you're like missing out on a, on a piece of life. That's quite, quite beautiful and mm -hmm. will make a difference to your longevity if that's what you're so, so worried about. And you want it to be rich while you're alive anyways. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Dude, you're not taking it with you. No, you don't want to be the richest person in the graveyard. Somebody told me that the other mm -mm. day. Mm -mm. <laughs> can't take it with no, you. That was also, yeah. you can't take it. And it's lonely, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I want to experience. That's what my kid's been to eight countries already. He's wow. only two. So like, wow. I had a child. I'm not stopping my life. My wife and I like, he's a backpack. Boom. He's a backpack. He goes with us like a backpack. So don't think your life ends because you have a child. It's harder. Yeah, so cool. Not saying yeah. it's easier, but like. People are like, well, he's not going to remember anything. I'm like, I will. And I'll have photos. Hey, buddy, you've been to Spain, France, Switzerland, Germany, Denmark. Like, look where you've been. Wow. So, that's and so that's cool. how that's how we're going to experience life and the culture and everything. So, yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. And but let's uh, your, let's shift a little bit. Did you, it was a son or daughter? Yeah. Son. His name's oh, Remy. Yeah. Remy. Oh, great. Great. Remy, Remy yeah. Love. His middle name's Love. That's great. So, That's so great. I, I like to say he's going to walk in the room one day when his voice drops. He's like, hey, I'm Remy Love. I'm <laughs> like, That's it. Game over. I'm like, you're set yeah. up to win life, buddy. Come on. Oh, yeah. Just the coolest. <laughs> uh, well, you wanted to switch That's, gears? That'd be a good poetry writing name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's dive a little bit into this love and fear and some of what your work is based off of. And let's cool. start unpacking. You know, I know in one capacity, when I was talking to someone on your team, she kind of mentioned that because you are anonymous, a lot of people actually thought you were a woman and, and kind of yeah. freaked out or were surprised that you were a man. Yeah. How often does that happen? Because I actually always knew you were a man and never thought of you other as a woman so maybe because then i write from that space too i don't know yeah i mean i, I love it you know it's like it, it's like we were talking about before you kind of you know you make because i'm anonymous you can make atticus into whoever you want or want her or him to be mm -hmm. and i think that's beautiful and ultimately it doesn't really matter uh who I, who i am it's like if you connect with the words you make them your own instill your own meaning then that's what's important so um but yeah, I've, I've always thought it, it's funny and uh, I'm always like, sorry to disappoint, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, I, th I think it's like part of my like writing process is like I do like to write from the female perspective a lot of the time. And I have um, I have three sisters and, uh, you know, I think it was always I think I draw a lot of my inspiration from them and kind of seeing their their you know, grow throughout the years and their relationships and like relationships that worked relationships and didn't. And just like, I think I got a pretty, pretty clear picture of what it, what it is to be a, you know, a girl and, and a woman growing up mm -hmm. in, in North America. And, and so I, I draw, draw a lot. And so I like to write from the female perspective and, and, um, and the male perspective. Um, I also write about kind of like the old man kind of and you know the old man said um and I, I i love that i kind of like imagining into the future and and what i would say bestow to a younger person or what i wish you know my like wisdom father told me yeah what's that voice and what what could they 
instill in me. So yeah, I love that. Mm. Do you do that kind of with, with your art? It's just kind of like a lot of it spent, I mean, obviously in your imagination, but kind of how do you find uh, creativity or like how, what's your process a bit? So most of my process, way to flip it back on me. <laughs> most <laughs> of my, pro- no, 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 it's, it's all good. Most of my process is, look, the easiest way for me to say is I'm talking to myself. 99% of the time I'm talking to myself. That's where the premise of this whole thing started. So the first mural asked the question, who will you be? Top left. The right of the mural had 80 words, responsible, leader, joy, grateful, amor, love, you just name it, everything in that space. And then it had my silhouette open up like this and it was in and out of the heart. And there was like an outline of a heart in it. It was all in gray. And what led me to that point is I was depressed and I didn't see in the world what I needed to see to shift me out of my conversation. I had to go in and do the work. Why, like, why am I feeling unworthy and depressed? And who am I? I would judge myself for feeling depressed. Like I'm healthy. I'm fit. I got a good job. I have no baggage. Like who am I? Like, yeah, that's, that's not right. So then I painted what I, Oh, today I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to choose love. And that's how I'm going to move forward in my life. And every piece, step by step by step, be humble, do what you love. Anything can happen. Anything can be, Mm -hmm. you are beautiful. I am gratitude, breathe and so on and so forth. It was always me talking to that other side of myself. And I know that as human beings, we're mirrors of each other. We're reflections of each other. We don't sync up with everyone. Obviously my child is, a very close reflection we're very much in a similar alignment in whatever we're tapping into in close reflections but there's people that don't vibe with us but they vibe with other people yeah but we're all in reflection so i'm like i need to know what it's like to live in possibility so i painted a mural that reminded me to always choose to live in possibility i I wasn't doing what i love i painted a mural that says do what you love so i could tap into that Mm -hmm. again always speaking to me but it wasn't about me. It was for me. And because it was for me, it was for you. That's so cool. Uh, what a, yeah, what a beautiful way to, to say it. And it's, it's funny, I haven't, haven't kind of articulated or thought about it like that, but I would say I do the same thing. I'm like, I, so much of this stuff is like, you know, a therapeutic process of like writing for me. Like, what do I want to mm-hmm. hear? What do I want to believe? What do I you know, what's the world I want to live in? What's the love story that I want to, you know, be a part of? And what does that look like? And so, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. It's just like you're, 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 you're making art for yourself. And by doing that, you know, somebody else reads it or sees it and says, Hey, I I connect with that because, you know, I'm sure you find the same thing. It's like, they can tell that it's real. It can tell that it's authentic and Mm -hmm. they too want to live that life or they want to tie, you know, connect to that. They want to breathe or love or, you know, be great, you know, gracious that day. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's a cool way of saying that. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about it like that. Yeah. Cause, cause then there's moments of like, that's awesome. That's cool. Oh, I love it. Another new mural. And I love all that stuff too. You know, it feels good to like, I just put in four days on this thing, 12 hours a day. I hope you love yeah. it. But when someone's like, Hey, this is what it meant for me. And they unpack this, this trauma and this story and reorganize themselves. Yeah. So when I painted that first mural, this homeless guy walked by and he said, nice mural. And then he kind of sat there and lingered and I'm in Santa Monica, Venice. So, you know, we have a homeless problem. So I'm painting at 1145 at night and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. Is it, do I need to like be ready to throw down, to run? Is he going to like converse? Is he just going to ask me for money? Like, I don't know. And all of a sudden he's like, nice work. But then he lingered and I'm just like, "Mm, I don't know if I could keep painting right now. And then he's like, if only I had seen this years ago, I probably wouldn't be a homeless alcoholic on the street right now. That right there from the first mural, I'm like, that's why. Wow. Like the cool mural, the nice work, that's one thing. But that, when you change someone or have them think differently, you know, I don't know. Have you ever had someone message you and say, hey, I didn't take my life today. I, I, I called the person today. And that's why I do this. That's why artists need to keep doing what they do. We don't know how many lives yeah. we save. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, 
it's really um, remarkable, you know, that, that, that was one piece I didn't, uh, I never expected is because you just kind of put it at your art out there and uh, you, you know, mm -hmm. you don't think about it. And then, yeah, the amount of messages I've gotten that have been like, you know, I just read this piece and um, you know, I was, I've been struggling with suicide or I was thinking about suicide. The amount of that I get is, uh, you know, unfathomable. Um, and I just think, you know, I just think it's, it's beautiful. It's like word art, it finds you when it needs to. And, um, and, you know, I'm just so, so glad that it can kind of ripple mm -hmm. out like that. And, and, you know, I, I've always loved the ripple effect of these things. It's like, you know, so much stuff influences me and probably you. And then, you know, we put it out into the world and then that ripples other people who go and create art or poetry and, and, or songs and that ripples out and it's like you know you never know what kind of positive uh effects you're having on on people but you kind of mm -hmm. you, you hope you hope that you know positively affecting more than more than just the readers and just ripples out into the world yeah and everyone we get back that just keeps us going like that's why i do yeah. it yeah all the other yeah. stuff is a nice bonus but like that's why yeah absolutely so. Um, I get, I get a lot of people who, who struggle with self-injury, self-harm, who, uh, you know, put, uh, tattoos over scars. And, um, mm. so I have a lot of, I've known a lot of people in my life, um, that have struggled with self-harm and, um, I love it when they, they're like, I'm reclaiming this, this place and re I'm reclaiming these scars and what they mean. And they put something really positive over top and they, they own it in a different way. I'm thought that was yeah, I, beautiful. I just had someone on a couple episodes ago and she shared about this author. Something Wild, I think, was the name. I forgot. Susan Wild. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'll look it up. But basically she said people get to learn, should write from their scars, not from their wounds. A lot of the times mm -hmm. we are often coming from our wounds. So we think mm -hmm. we're helping someone, but we're coming from heal from fear, which is coming from our wounds. Oh, this happened to me. So if you do that, it's going to happen to you too. Let me tell you all those mm -hmm. reasons. Instead of like, I am now healed. Here's my scar. Let me come from my scar and actually wow. give you the advice of what happened. So I so that's that. a powerful place for them to be able to tattoo over a scar because now they're actually coming from their healed place. Yeah. Not from yeah, the wound. Yeah. 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 It's coming. Yeah. Coming from a strength, uh, coming from a place of strength. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I haven't heard that before. I really love that. Come from your, come from your scars and not your, not your wounds. Um, yeah. And I think, I think the wounds yeah. it's go ahead. Oh, it's just like, you know, I think you could actually like, correlate that to like in relationships or anything like that just like you know come from a place where you're not like deeply you know when you're even when you're arguing come from like a, a you know a healed place in instead of like mm -hmm. i'm deeply wounded and i want to have this conversation right now i think yeah not exactly but you get it yeah no it's just a beautiful place to to come from it takes work though it takes a lot of work and that's why we're here to keep doing the work it's practice it's a mental muscle working on the yeah. heart it's just like going to the gym so what do you say do you think you tap in to a greater power spiritually whether it's god what do you believe in that and does your work come from a place of spirituality yeah i, I think i'm a very spiritual person and and believing um you know I, I think i've always been and and when i'm writing i feel like i am tapping into some sort of um, you know, flow. And sometimes I can, I feel like I'm mm -hmm. connected and I'm, and I'm flowing and it just is all easy. And sometimes, you know, like, like all artists, writers and creatives, it's like, sometimes you're just not flowing and not connected. And, um, you know, I think, but yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, I have a friend who, who's writing this book called, uh, he calls it open source religion. He, he's an ex intel mm -hmm. engineer and, um the the basic premise is is like looking instead of being like i need to be this religion this religion or this religion he look he's like he's like what if we could look at all of the religions and kind of open source of like what made sense to you um like 
you know, I like how the, they do this. I believe in this and I believe in this. And you kind of all mm-hmm. collectively make your own, make your own religion. And not that I do that, but it, I just found that, that concept really intriguing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very spiritual. I had the, I had the luck of being invited to go meet the Dalai Lama in, in Dharmashala in India recently. And, uh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a beautiful experience. And, and just hearing him so, you know, so pure to purpose, just kind of talking about meaning and life and love and, you know, who we are as beings on the planet. And, um, you know, a lot of the things he touched on about, about love, um, you know, it, it was just beautiful. And, and I found it very moving and spiritual. And, um, as you can imagine, I am. Yeah. And how, how did that come about? Was it just an email? Was it a call or? Uh, yeah. I mean, he just slid into my DMS and, uh, no, mm. <laughs> no I'm kidding. It, it, uh, it was, uh, through a group. Um, the, it's like a, it's called the compassion Institute and, and, um, you know, part of it, part of the idea was, was just connecting, um, the, the Dalai Lama to artists and to creators and mm. to people with voices in the world. And, um, and, you know, just being able to kind of further that, that me- message of positivity and, and love, um, you know, um, in the, in this day and age and as, as we move into the future. And, and so a group of us got, you know, from all different walks of life, got invited, uh, to go and, and meet, um, his holiness as he's called. Um, it Mm. was very, 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 very meaningful for, for me. And I know for everyone that was there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I would love to meet an individual like that. Not only it's really, it's like, I want to share the space and feel their energy. Like, yeah. could you tell like there was a different vibe or a oh, calmness absolutely. or something when you were yeah. around him? Absolutely. It, it's funny you <laughs> picked up on that because it's like he walks in there, you know, we're all sitting down and he what kind of walks in the room to join us. And, you know, the the air or like the whole energy changes. And uh, I've, uh, it, it, you know, you can tell there's something very, very, that's very, very it's magnetic. It's like very, very spiritual. Mm-hmm. It's hard to explain, but it's like all the air in the room is, is removed, but you feel this glowing positivity. And when he kind of looks you in the, in the eye, he said this thing to me and, and I've like tried to interpret it, but you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't get to ask him what he meant by it, but he, he was meeting us all and we were kind of like chatting and he like looks at me in the eyes and he's just, and he goes, I'm going to see you again. I'm going to see you again. And I didn't know if it was like afterlife or like, I'm going to go back there and see him again. But I was like, yeah. what do you, what do you know that I don't know? It's like, am I going to see you in the afterlife? Cause wherever you end up, I'd love to, to end up somewhere close to there. Cause it's, yeah. Be, you know, but it was, it was a very special experience. Awesome. Um, I had a group of friends. I don't know if, how long ago was that? Um, I went last, I think it was like September, October. It might've been the same, same group. Okay. LA guys. Um, do you know, yeah. NQ? Was it, I was just going to say, did NQ go? He, he went on the one yeah, before yeah. and it was actually, yeah. so that was it through the same group, same, same group mm. of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And in, in the group he went through, I knew a lot more people in that group. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you yeah. Know, um, uh, Magnuson. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'm sure. Mags. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Leslie, I met him a while uh, back. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Schofield? So, what's that? Leslie Schofield? Yeah. Is that who you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so mm-hmm. she was a big organizer in that. I mean, we can offline about our, our sh- overlapped networks, but um, yeah, that, that, was the, that was the group uh, I went with as well. Um, I love NQ. Him and I have been friends a long time. Yeah, yeah. I've known I've known Adam for a while now. Uh, yeah, he he came on early. He's like in the first ten episodes or something on the show. Oh no way! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Like he he let me podcast. guinea pig on him. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You, that's where you call on your friends when you're just like, when you're, you know, just trying to figure it out. You're like, all right, how's this going to work? I'm, launch, I'm, I'm launching this thing. Want to come, yeah. come, come talk to me. Let's talk yeah, about exactly. fear. He actually, he, he shared, he shared a poem about fear on there that he hadn't released yet. So that was, that oh, was pretty cool. cool. God, his memory yeah. of poems is, is like no one else. But I can't do that. You asked it's, me to recite a poem. His delivery there. though. Oh yeah, it's his delivery though. He when he goes up there, and I'm just like, bro, your voice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have friends yeah. that are like, hey, you should come do spoken word. I'm doing spoken word, and I like drop those ones that you th- always threw. And he's like, I don't, I haven't memorized these things. Yeah. Like, yeah, just yeah. read it then. I'm like, but then I'll be disconnected from the audience. Well, then memorize it. So I haven't, I haven't done the stand up thing yet, but uh, oh, yeah. maybe I have to do that. I get to do that one day. Yeah. Adam could give you some tips. Um, no, I know. He's done the little workshops and stuff. Oh, yeah. So um, let's talk about love. Yeah. How do you define love? Ooh. Um, I think love is a different definition uh, for for everybody. I'm trying to remember what, what the Dalai Lama said. And... Um, uh there there's a you may have heard this before i posted it something on my instagram and you know they were talking uh to this monk about about love and and it said like love is not not about like taking something from someone but it's about giving someone so many pieces of yourself that you fall in love with yourself within them and Mm. there's something there's something one that i that I truly believe about that and in that like love at its core is this like exchange and you know, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving and, and um, you're kind of falling in love with all you've given to someone else. And the definition of love love for me, uh, um, and I'm really interested to hear what you, you say too, you think too, but it's, it's certainly evolved over the years. And I, I think like when I was, you know, a rambunctious teenager, what I thought love was is very, very different than what I think it is now. And, um, you know, as, as I, I matured and as my relationships matured, I, I've really come to realize that it's so much more about like safety and vulnerability and, um, you know, showing up, um, again and again in my new book that I'm, that I'm about to release, um, it's, LVOE two, the volume two. Um, I I have a, a poem that, that kind of talks a lot about that. It's it's about it's about like love isn't like what you say you'll do or like how many times you say I love you. It's 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 the showing up. It's like the mm. day after day after day after day. Like how do you show up and how do you love? That becomes the true story of your of your love. And I think you know, people will like, you know, I think people make a mistake where they like, they like think that love's about like promising or just like, you know, saying I love you enough times like, well, you know, I tell you, I love you all the time, but it's like, it really isn't that. And that's a piece of it, but it's like the real, real juice of it all is it's in the showing up. It's like, how do you show your love over and over again? What pieces mm. of yourself are you giving them over and over and over again, over days and weeks and years? Yeah, so, oh, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what well about said. you? What I, I say love. Oh, here we go. Flip it back. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't um, help it. I'm like, I'm like. Uh, no, no, it's uh, great. It's so, so I say, uh. I say, uh, welcome to Live Through Love with your host, Atticus. <laughs> um, no, have fun with it. I'm an open book. Ask me questions. I don't shy away. But uh, <laughs> love is a verb. Love is a verb. Love is action. It's an active state of being. I actually gave a keynote on Sunday, and I put a whole section in there about love. So I'll give you some of the stuff that I wrote in there. It's funny. I wrote like 20 different versions of this speech. Three of them are like harvard lectures that i can go give but uh love is beyond definition 
And I believe that we get very confused with the rom-com and Valentine's Day side of love and the fact that we love things. And it's great to love things. I love a good rom-com, right? McConaughey wrote that to glory now because he hung up that hat and now he's on the other side of it. Used to love mm-hmm. his movies and stuff, but I love, I'm a sucker for a rom-com. Oh. I am a romantic. That's part of why this all comes. But I hate Valentine's Day. I was mm-hmm. born the day before, February 13th. I despise mm-hmm. Valentine's Day. Um, it is a glorified way to just take our money and upcharge everything to give mm-hmm. your wife roses or your boyfriend roses or husband or whatever, roses and chocolates that day that cost an arm and a leg. But every day should be Valentine's Day, which is why I hate Valentine's Day. We should always show up like that. So kind of what you're saying, it's actively going, going, and going. But the English language has love as a single word. We know right now it's beyond definition. What you described and talking to countless of people on the show, like there's 101 ways to do this and say it and yeah. more. And the dictionary says it's a strong form of affection, a strong feeling. Like, that's what it defines love as. But we look at the Greeks, and they've got several different ways of describing love, right? Eros and philia and philousia and agape and a few others. And they all mean different things. So love means all those things and everything else. We've just made it a single word, which is fine. But just realizing it is more than I love these sneakers that I'm wearing. It's more than I love this cup of coffee. It's more than saying I love you. It's just being it and showing up. You say it because that affirms something. But like, do your actions say it? Do your way of being say it? Does your energy say it? Does everything you're doing say it and exude it? So I say it's an active state of being and it's beyond definition. I love that. I'm going to. I'm gonna steal some of that next time I'm asked because they're like, like it's like a verb. It's uh, it's an action. It's like a way of way of being. It's not like it's a that. choice. Yeah. It's, a, it's choice. a choice. You have to choose it daily. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. W- one of my poems I say, <clears throat> before the mirror, every morning, choose love. Mm. So you're looking at yourself in the mirror. You're choosing yourself. Mm-hmm. And I have a shirt that says "Love is the answer" on it. But on the inside, most people don't know. I had it says yes, you are. So while they're wearing wow. the shirt saying love is the answer, I've I've been telling them the whole time that they're the answer. So they're saying love is the answer, but I'm the answer. They may not know that I'm actually saying that they're the answer. Oh, that wow. they are love. That's so cool. That's great. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's powerful. Um, little 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 meta Easter egg things that I put into stuff. Yeah, I mean, you're an artist. That uh, I feel like we can't help ourselves. We're like, oh, it needs to, needs another layer. Needs another layer. Of course not. But yeah. trying to keep it simple though, like it's love is the answer. Yes, you are. Three yeah. words and three words. Yeah. And then when someone flips it around to wash it, they're like, what? What is this in here? And they message me and I'll tell them. They're like, whoa, yeah. you know, like mind blown. Oh, um, that's great. The but, Easter eggs. Oh. So you've written a couple different books now. You just talked about LVOE2. Yeah. Um, how do you, do you pick seasons? How do you categorize your books? You know, is one have a thesis and a through line? The second one, this is now LVOE1 and now LVOE2 coming out. What is your process in, in your work? Like in my case, I have several different categories within everything that I'm doing. It doesn't mm-hmm. really apply to like a book of poetry. Do you like have a thing you want to answer or how does that work? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I- you know, it, it's different. It, it's, um, I don't have like a, a really like plan. I'm going to like write a book about this theme, write a book about this theme. It, it really shows up in like where I am in my life. And, you know, even if you look at my first three books, they're really about, you know, um, the like sadness and like overcoming sadness and like finding the hope. And, and that speaks to, really where I was in my life then, you know, it's like what I was Mm. searching for. And, and, um, those three books get, you know, sequentially like more and more hopeful. And, and, um, you know, one thing I, I think about 
LVOE one and LVO LVOE number two, which I'm about to release, is that they are like really positive and really happy and really um, they're really just about love. Um, and um, you know, though it's just like again, like where I am in my life, and it's like what I want to write write about. And I think you know, we were talking about the fear, um, fear and love, and that kind of dichotomy, and you know those those first three books, I think I was writing from a really sad place and uh, mm. a real feel, a real feel, uh, a lot of fear. Um, and I think that they, they're like, I think they're like, they were beautiful messages and, and they are hopeful, but these ones are just like um, coming from a real happy place, uh, much happier mm. place. Um, and I think that shows up and, and there's a real like positivity to it. Yeah. So if we're looking at the lifespan of Atticus on a line, right, this is the before and the after. Yeah. You're, you're coming from fear, from a seasonality. Yeah. You're starting to do the work. You're putting yourself out there yeah. and now you're over the bump because now it's positive and happy. Yeah. It's the active practice of being in past the work and just yeah. continuing that message now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly it. It's funny. It's like I, I've always said that I can write when I'm really sad or really happy, but I can't write in the middle when I'm just like, eh. you know, when I'm not. I can relate. I can relate. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard when you're uh, when you're in the middle, numb, <laughs> not too happy, not too sad. You know. You, you no, I get feel. it. And it's like you, overwhelmed or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's like, pff, oh, it's hitting me right now. Let's go. Yeah. But there's also, you know, as a creator, like at this point, we're professionals, right? We are professional creators, yeah. artists yeah, and totally. professionals. And I'll take an athlete as an example. You're a professional athlete. You have a game. You got to be on. Yeah. You can feel extra on. But so we've got to be on at all times. So sometimes because there's people that are like, well, I haven't been on for 10 years. So let's just call it writer's block. So for 10 years, you've had writer's block. So how do you deal with not being on? Do you push through? Do you write? You even say, like, I don't write all the best stuff. I don't design all the best stuff. You just keep going, like, toss it, toss it, toss it, yeah. toss it. That's the one. Toss it. So yeah. do you have a practice of I write for X amount of hours? This is what I do. I've got to sit down and write a book. Because then, you know, I have aspirations of writing books. And I've written so many speeches and essays mm -hmm. and this, like there's something there, but I feel like I have to be like, now's the time do it. Yeah. So like, how do you, how do you make that happen? Besides when I'm commissioned to do work, it's that other stuff that you're just creating is what I'm kind of saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you know, it's, it's honestly one of the most common questions I get is like, how do you deal with writer's block and how do you, you know, move past it and what's your process? And, um, you know, I think it, it's my process is imperfect. I probably should write more than I do. But, you know, like you said, you kind of reach a point where you're professional and, and you just got to you got to deliver. And so um, you you do little tricks and and uh, processes that that really like help that. And so um, for me, like in terms of what how, how I write is is like I'll write in the morning, like I'll get up and um, I'll have a coffee and I'll just like jump into it. Um, and I think one of the most important things to, to realize is like some days you're on and some days you're off. And the most important thing is you show up and you, you see if mm -hmm. you're like, if you're kind of like on. And I think that consistency is, is like my number one suggestion for, for, for writing, um, and creating is just like showing up. And even if you're like, ah, I don't really feel it, sometimes you can push through and that's when your best stuff happens. And sometimes it's just not working. And, and I think it's fair to realize that sometimes and, and be like, you know what, today's not working, I'll show up tomorrow. But um, I think it was, you know, Stephen King or something that was like, I, I, I only commit to writing five minutes a day. And if I'm feeling in those five minutes, I'll write for hours, I'll write for the whole day. Um, but if I'm not feeling it, I understand that and it's just not my day. Um, and I think there's something really smart about that. I know Jerry Seinfeld did that for writing jokes as well. He, his, he's famous, like he has a calendar and every time he writes, he puts a little red X on the calendar and, and you know, his thing is like, never break that, 
that street. Mm. Um, I think there's something really powerful about that too. And, um, you know, there's little tricks and I, I'm sure you have similar things, but it's like, you're not feeling that creativity. It's like one thing I've said is like, go take a walk around the block, get out in nature or like go work out at the gym or just do something different. Um, you know, go to a coffee shop, change up your writing air, you know, space. Um, you know, don't, don't, if you're just like hitting a wall, hitting a wall, um, don't, you know, mix it up, change it up. And there's, there's like ways. Yeah, to, don't force it. Don't force it. There's ways to break, um, you know, you know, it, there's a ways to break through that wall basically. So, you know, all of those things help a lot. Um, there's this famous thing that Hunter S. Thompson used to do. He wrote, he's the writer of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And um, he he's like, if I couldn't write, he, he would like take out his typewriter and open the, his like favorite writers, like maybe his Bukowski or like Lord Byron or like whomever. And he would just open up their books and just write their mm -hmm. stuff, you know, word for word, just like Ooh, write their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, He's like, once you kind of get in that flow of a great writer, it's way easier to just like then go into your own stuff and make it your own and keep like um, and create yourself. And uh, I love that. I love that, too. So. So, yeah, if I'm if I'm not like um, if I'm not feeling it, I'll I'll read other other people's stuff. And, and, um, you know, sometimes I've, I've done the same thing. I've like tried to write out theirs and try to get into that mental space. And so there's lots of like little things you can do to just, um, mm -hmm. to hone it in. And, and, um, there, there's a fair, there's a famous quote that's like, you know, uh, uh, by Bukowski. And he's like, the, bet, the, the number one thing I would say when you're trying to write like the perfect piece is don't try. And like, what he means by that is like, don't go out every day being like, I need to write the most, the best book, the best, like, you know, whatever that's ever been written ever. It's like, you don't need to put that pressure on yourself. Just like go out there and instead just like have fun, just like make it enjoyable and the mm -hmm. magic, the flow, it'll come. But like the second you're like, in your head thinking I, I this has got to be great this has got to be great this has got to be great um that's when not typically when the great the best stuff comes like i'm sure you're the same it's like your best stuff probably didn't happen when with somebody being like come on you got to make something awesome you got to mm -hmm. make something awesome it was like you were probably like sunset was coming down and you're like uh, you know on some cool ass wall in some cool ass area of the world and you, and like magic happened you know um, yeah sometimes you, i say the wall yeah. spoke to me <laughs> yeah exactly you know exactly and that you know but you you were having fun i guarantee it like the first time you were you came up with with love or like any of your 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 mm -hmm. signature pieces you know you were you're enjoying it um yeah so that that's kind of you know m my process and um i should write more um but it, you know, it's, it, it's a uh, imperfect science that you just kind of remind yourself and push yourself and, you know, try to be the best you can be. Yeah. Well, I would say, should you really write more? Seems to be working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, I, I think like now if I have a book that's coming out, that's when I'll write. But I, I used to mm -hmm. just really just write almost every day because I enjoyed it. And, and I, that's what I mean by I should write more. I should, you know, listen and, and show up. But like when I've got a book, I'll write every day, every morning um, and just hammer away at it. Yeah. yeah. And then what does that look like? Do you have a, it could be your publishing deal that says you need to do X amount of books, but do you have like your own game plan of, LVOE two was here. Is there a three or what's next? Or is it kind of how you're feeling? Like, what does that trajectory look like a book a year? And then yeah. what's going to be the evolution after that is my follow up question. Yeah, it's a great, great question. Um, I do have kind of a rollout of, of like how many, um, you know, the amount of like the books I want to put out. I'm, 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 I'm going to launch this, um, this really cool journal that I've been working on for a long time 
you know, on the theme of, of like self-help and, and positivity. Um, so the, the journal is called spark and basically it's a one sentence journal. And the, the basic premise of it is like, we all live these incredible lives. Um, sometimes we just need a little spark to remember them by. And, you know, I think everybody's busy these days and, um, I've always been someone who, who like, will will do this incredible adventure or experience or have this incredible moment and then forget about it. And then somebody will bring it up and it'll spark this memory in me. And I was like, what if I could capture all these sparks in one place so mm. that I could go back and read them and it would just spark these incredible memories alive for me, you know? And, um, and what it, what I did when I started writing, like I just started doing this one day and what I found is like, it was such a powerful tool for, um, kind of like, uh, depression and just like, you know, feeling good. Um, anytime I was kind of feeling down or anything like that, I'd go to this book and it would just spark these incredible memories. And I'm like, Oh my God, yes, yes, yes. And by the end of, of just flipping through this, this book, it would, um, I just feel better. And so, so, um, yeah, I'm launching this book, Spark. I, I think I have a copy here. I don't know if you can see it or what, but it'll, it's, uh, middle of June it's coming out. So it's, yeah, it's called Spark. And, nice. Uh, yeah. It's just, this really, we spent a long time just making it as beautiful and it's like linen. It's got a bookmark. Um, so yeah, I'm releasing LVOA two and then I'm releasing Spark and then, um, you know, between us, I, I have some some big aspirations for a novel that I'm working on, and then this series of children's books, which I'm really excited about. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I've I, got. I got lots of things on the radar. No, that's awesome. I got. I've been reading. I read children's books every night to my son, oh, and yeah. in my head, I have this whole series around him as the main character, Remy, and just teaching everyone different concepts of what we do in the world and then each book would have like a different color love and then that color would be a whole oh. theme and story and almost oh. like if you remember care bears so maybe yeah. the character would have a colored love that means something and we start amplifying so, but it's oh, like cool. another thing i need to figure out when i do it but now that i told you i'm that much closer to doing it <laughs> um so well well you should do that i mean Imagine Remy was reading a book about himself with, uh, that'd be so cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. So, yeah. so we have, uh, a collab coming out. Do yeah. you want to talk about that? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, ex I'm very excited about it. I mean, you know, I think we started this, this whole thing is we, we both have brands that we've built like largely around love and positivity. And I, I think it's hilarious we, um, you know, haven't connected earlier and we haven't worked together earlier. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. You know, it's like uh, Atticus and Ruben. And, um, yeah, we, we're coming out with a bunch of shared merch. And, um, you know, before we started recording, we were talking about this mural. But I think it would be cool to kind of, kind of incorporate both and do something and, and uh, do like a really amazing uh mm -hmm. mural um it you know i like i love murals that become like landmarks and like that's what you've done such a good job of is like people will go out of their way to like find your stuff take photos with it and mm -hmm. and um you know it becomes part of the city part of the community and it, it's such an incredible um you know way to spread art but yeah yeah um what do you think about our collab it's gonna be, i think it's gonna be great uh, I like it. I, obviously, I like it. I, you know, it's funny because I spent so much time in the weeds of like, dude, what am I going to send over? I've got the digital versions. I've got this. You you play with a lot of handwriting. I'm like, let me just hand write the entire thing, scan yeah. it, and we just throw that on the hoodie and the prints and everything because yeah. then it's handwritten, but it's also a nod to poetry. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I didn't share with your team or anyone that i do poetry also and things so i just thought it was just really cool to put it all together yeah um and i think it's a good I, starting point 
Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, great starting point. And, um, and I had no idea you did poetry, and I love, I loved, uh, I love hearing that. I mean, I think it's, um, it's so cool. When are you going to come out with a poetry book? So I self-published one. It's on. Oh, cool. It's on my. So a couple of years ago, I published it. It's a self. I call it a self-love journal. So it's a working journal where you there's prompts. So people can write things every few pages. It's write yourself a love letter. Um, and I ask questions like one of the, I think this one's in why do you hide behind a facade, a mask that you put on just to see fake to show the world who you are. But it's not I don't have it memorized again, but it's yeah, like, like a whole mask thing. It's like we're putting on this mask for the world to see. But you go look and you're just seeing fake. So it's going back to yourself like that. Or other things in there. So I say at the beginning, are you ready to start your journey? It's your love story. And, and then you go through the whole thing. And then the last page is a mirror. And it says before the mirror every morning, wow. choose love. Now you have um, you've been in your love story this entire time. So you wrote yourself a whole love letter through the entire process to yourself, finding yourself in your own love story. Wow. So that's, that's the whole premise of it. I'll send you a copy of it. Yeah, I'll get your address and send it to you. I'd love to see it. That sounds that sounds great. What a yeah. Can people buy that on Amazon or where? I just or have it on my website. Yeah, cool. yeah. I just made it on my. It's a nice hardcover, soft touch. It's got cool. it's yellow and black, and then just has my my loves in it and stuff like that, and fonts that I like to use, handwriting and not. And like one of them is like. Um, like some of the stuff I write is like, oh, there you are standing in your darkness alone. Uh, and then well, how's it go? It's like she yelled out to the world. Something, something. I don't, I got to remember Whoa, these things. Cool. I probably shouldn't be trying to spit these out here. But it's like you'll, once you fall in love with yourself, you'll never find yourself alone. Like that's it. You Once you choose yourself and fall in love with yourself, you'll never be alone. There's yeah. no way you could be alone in the world. And obviously, if you're God and spiritual and all that, you're tapped into all that as well. But sometimes people do feel alone, and it's because they forget that they are with themselves. And like, I am yeah. here. I am not alone. It gets lonely. Yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't get lonely. I know. I don't know if you deal with being lonely as a creator. I'm in here by myself sometimes. I'm like, yeah, it's just me. The whole world's around me happening, and I'm just in here by myself trying to do my thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, definitely. I mean uh yeah all the time i think loneliness is is something that everyone everyone struggles with um oh, that's cool i didn't know you made that journal maybe we should collab on a journal sometime that, that's like a love journal that'd be cool that would be a, awesome love. yeah we should make that happen you know on the on the topic of valentine's that you mentioned er, earlier is um uh this year we're doing a theme on in valentine's all about self-love and you know it's the idea I think it's taking back Valentine's and being, it, you know, taking away that pressure of like, hey, you've got to find, you know, you got to find someone to be with on Valentine's or it's all about relationships. And it's like, no, no, it's like this is this is as much uh, loving yourself as it is about loving yeah. someone else. Yeah. So we're, we're excited to kind of build out a whole theme around self-love in Valentine's. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to own the month of February. Like as a, as a brand, I was born well, February 13th, daughter, you know? day before. Yeah. 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 And my yeah. son was born February 23rd. Wow, cool. You know, if we get pregnant this month, maybe they'll be born February again. But like, I want to own that month. And it's not Galentine's Day is not the thing either. No. That isn't the right. Like the intention no. might have been cool, but that's not what this is either. Self-love. It's dude. And you could do self-love with your partner, with your romantic partner. Yeah. Like take each other or give each other permission, like go pamper yourself, go wine and dine yourself, take yourself yeah. out to a coffee, go to a movie, go eat dinner, be by yeah. yourself. So true. So, yeah, I love that. It's so true. Yeah. So, so here's the, here's the final question. This is how we yeah. wrap it all up. Are all you right. ready? Oh uh, yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. We're not grading it. Yeah. But uh, Atticus, how do you define living a life through love? Oh, I love that. Living a life through love. I think, 
You know what I, I would say, and and it's um, it's touching on a lot of the things we've talked about, but I'd say living a life through love is about showing up. It's like how you how you show up every day. You know, we touched on that a lot, and I think it's it's the truth. It's like that's how you live your life. How do you show up? Not only for yourself or not only for you know the people in your life but yourself mm -hmm. how do you show up in love with yourself and for yourself and that self-love as well god you know we're just bringing the whole thing in one beautiful little circle here um, look at that yeah no I, you know i think I, I truly believe that you know it's like i i think that it's it's all about love is all you need and it, it's like show up yourself and and it's the showing up every single day uh, in love, uh, for others and for yourself and in your art and your, uh, mm -hmm. whether it be poetry, you know, work, relationships, whatever. It's all about the love. No, I agree. Let's show up every day, be who we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. I think to add something to that, cause we brought up purpose a little bit earlier when you were saying, you know, my Dharma, my purpose, like I think we get so caught up in like, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? You know what mm -hmm. humans are on this planet to be? To love and be loved. Our purpose mm -hmm. is that. Yeah. But sometimes we're like, well, I'm not the president and I'm not a great inventor and I'm not a celebrity <laughs> and I'm not a pro athlete. No, but what are you? Let's not yeah. look at what you're not. Let's look at what you are. And then let's look at what those people that you said you're not are also. Again, we're yeah. back to being human and we all want to be loved and be loved. And you could be the best mother, the best father, the best janitor. And that is the ultimate thing you could have given to the planet. Yeah. You know? And I said that was the last question, but I'm going to have one more because now yeah, I want to sure. really think about it because a lot of what we're doing is being in service to others. So how would you define being in service? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, um, my partner and I talk about this a lot and, um, you know, it's something that I, I wanted to define the next decade. It's like, how do I show up and, and be in service? And, you know, I think Atticus has been a huge piece of like how I, I show up and how I've been in service. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, to be vulnerable and, and hopefully teach like men or give permission men, like I was given permission to be more vulnerable because I feel like, um, and I say men, but it's like, you know, anything any anybody just like be encourage them to be more vulnerable in their, in their relationships. And, um, and again, like not to, not to like beat a dead horse, but like to the, just, it's the showing up. It's like, how do you, how can you be in service? I've found that like, if you just like smile at people, in like mm. a public place or like, you know, someone's giving, you know, you kind of break out of that robotic thing of like, oh, that's 595. Okay, here's my card and like, you know, whatever. Um, just breaking out of that and seeing them and looking at them in the eye, smiling and being and like saying a little joke. It's unbelievable how it will change mm. your that interaction and it'll make their day better. And it's so easy to do. And it's something that my partner and I talk about a lot is like, how do we just show up? You know, it's like, yeah. like every day, how do we just, just show up in, in love and service to other people? Um, and how do I, and how do I like put that into, into Atticus as well? It's like, kind of like the, like I see you and, and, and whatnot, but yeah. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a big part of my next decade. It's like, how do I continue to, to, to be in service and how can I like really mm -hmm. evolve Atticus and, you know, Atticus, I feel like has been, um, you know, was invent, you know, created to be in service for, for other people. And, uh, yeah. I'm actually getting to a point, I think I talked about it in my, in my Ted talk, but, um, um, in, over the next few years, I'd like to actually just, um, gift Atticus, the whole ecosystem over to the, the followers and to charity and, and just like have him, um and the persona just exists for other people you know so yeah i'm, I'm working on how to how to do that but um yeah, Us using ai yeah maybe you know ai i think could be a part of it or just like how it they how i personify atticus mm -hmm. but, um you know moving forward and and um um but but like you know just the i'd love to to 
if I can give give Atticus to charity, I think I can start like sponsoring young writers, helping other people get published and like really turn it into this like foundation for good. Yeah. Well, you can either create your company into a B Corp or you just create a separate entity and yeah. just have your current one carve out a chunk for the org. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that. So that's the goal. That's the plan right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Well, this was really fun. Yeah. No, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in, sharing your truth. And where can everybody find you? Uh, You can Google me, but it's uh, at Instagram. It's Atticus Poetry or AtticusPoetry.com for like the merch, coffee, wine, all the things. Um, And then all my books are on uh, Amazon, Barnes, anywhere books are sold. Which is your favorite book? (laughs) Which is my favorite book? Uh, Mm -hmm. Either I think my first one, Love Her Wild. Because it was so pure. Mm-mm. What started it all? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Hi, Ruben. Thank you so much for tuning in to Live Through Love. If you love this episode, you'll love this episode.